So you decided you wanted more, huh? That's what I thought. Part three today, we're going to be talking about a little bit of baby, 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 baby antenna theory. All right, so stick around for part three of this five-part series where we talk about HF digital modes and how to send messages thousands of miles away on your own grid. Stick with me here now. You could spend your entire life studying this and only begin to understand what it is you're even thinking about. So at least if you're a knuckle dragon Texan like myself. But today we're going to make it simple and we're going to talk about antenna theory. Now I want to talk about the importance of the antenna. The antenna of your rig is arguably the most critical aspect of your mobile or stationary high or low power setup. Uh, the antenna is everything. The antenna is all the, all, it's where it all comes together. Your signal's leaving from right there. So it's, uh, it's really critical that you understand the basics of antenna theory so that you can accomplish your goal in uh, ideally sending a message either 50 or 5,000 miles away. The antenna will define what frequency you're communicating on. So uh, depending on the type of antenna you're using, you know, if it's a dipole antenna, the actual length of the antenna is what will allow you to transmit on a particular frequency. So um, having an antenna that's cut correctly, that is at the right length for, this, for the signal you're trying to be on, it's really important. And then, of course, the standing wave ratio or the SWRs of that antenna are also extremely important. And so, um, just again, just kind of just hammering home here that it's not, you go, go spend a $1,700 on a radio, it's not going to make a damn bit of difference if your antenna is not dialed and if you don't understand what type of antenna you need for the type of communication that you're looking to, uh, to do with that radio. So uh, the antenna is going to determine the strength and the direction of your signal. It is the lifeblood of your entire setup. All right, now that I've got the, um, now that I've got that hammered home to you, um, setting up your antenna for the desired range, long range angles versus short range angles. So there's all different types of, intention, of antennas here. Um, loop antennas, directional antennas, but the type of antenna that we're going to be talking about is going to be an inverted dipole. Now why we use an inverted dipole is due to the fact that we're trying to angle the signal. Now there's other antennas that would allow us to angle signals as well, but the most common in HF digital modes is an inverted dipole. And another reason for that is that it's very easy to pack. Because with an inverted dipole, you can just use antenna stakes attached to the end of the wires of your antenna and stake them out into the ground to get the desired angle of your signal beacon. So if you have your antenna angled like this, you're going to be shooting your signals up into the sky. Now if you have it angled flat, you're going to be shooting your signals straight up. Now why would you want one versus the other? Well in uh, part two we talked about sky wave propagation and how we're skipping these signals off the ionosphere. So if we wanted to get a station that was close by, we would angle our antenna straight across because that would shoot the signal straight up and it would bounce it somewhere straight back down. So I like to give the scenario that if we were in a mountainous town and we knew that somebody within 50 miles or we were looking to see if somebody within 50 miles um, had a station up so that we could send a signal for help, we would not want our antenna angled this way because that would shoot the skip further out. What we would want is we would want to level our antenna straight across to try and shoot it up and straight back down to get people within our vicinity to be able to hear us. Now, if we were trying to make a long distance contact, we would then re-angle that antenna so that we could shoot it out and skip it down thousands of miles away. So wherever that angle is, is, is the direction in which you're shooting those signals. So you're either shooting them up with a straight across antenna or you're shooting them out with an inverted V dipole antenna. But the great thing about a, uh, you know, a, a dipole that just uses wires that you can stake off with tent stakes is that that angle is very flexible. And depending on what type of transmitting you're trying to do, whether it's long range or short range, you're able to on the fly adjust that angle appropriately. So there are DIY kits for antennas that you can get. You can build your own. Uh, if you got some wire laying around and a Cobra head adapter, you can build your own antenna and just cut it to the length that you need. And there are plenty of good articles out there that talk about what the length of that antenna should be. And it's important to note that that antenna is sending off radiation. And so depending on the height of that antenna, there may be factors around you that are affecting the radiation of your antenna. 
And so as an example, if you're really close to the ground, there's going to be some radiation that's interfering with your RF versus if you're six feet off the ground. And that's why it's really important to have an SWR meter like a nano VNA. And we can talk about the nano VNA in another video, but you need to be able to measure the SWRs or the standing wave ratio of your antenna setup because one day you may have your antenna set up in an area where your SWRs are one to one and a half, which is the ideal range. But another day you may be in an area where some different factors are co-mingling with your RF and that may change your standing wave ratio. So it's important to have an SWR meter at all times and you need to be able to check your SWRs when you set your antenna up to see what types of changes you would need to make to get an ideal SWR. Now an SWR really only matters for transmitting as I understand it. To receive signals, the SWRs are not, not that important, but you need your SWRs to be between one and 1.5 to be able to get a clear, nice transmission. Now there are also pre-made antenna kits, uh, such as this one I featured here from Chameleon. Um, pre-made antenna kits are awesome, but again, what's going to determine the SWRs of that kit has a lot to do with where and how your antenna is set up. So just because someone markets an antenna as having a one to one and a half SWR, that's just where they tested it and how they tested it that gave them uh, that information. You will still need to make minor adjustments to your antenna setup every single time to get the ideal SWR. Now the advantage of a portable antenna like I was talking about earlier with a uh, dipole is that it's easy and quick to set up. You can just, the other day I hung one in the tree in my front yard six feet off the ground just using some paracord and then I used some tent stakes tied to the end with zip ties to get the desired angle that I wanted to make contact a thousand miles away. So the quick and the flexibility of the setup is, um, is what makes you know portable dipole wire antennas uh, desirable for you know low power on the move mobile setups right so uh, the quick setup is one advantage it's easily portable it's just as effective as going in and, and, and you know having a really nice large antenna it's just as effective they can be pretty inexpensive in the range from twenty dollars to two hundred dollars but relatively inexpensive depending on exactly what type of antenna and what type of features you're looking for within that antenna and as i mentioned earlier just the flexibility not within the range uh, but just the flexibility that you have to make a long antenna and, you know, potentially put it on some kind of reel to shorten it up so that you can have an antenna that uh, can be extended for, you know, 80 meters or shortened for 20 meters. So um, don't worry about that right now. As you start to look into it on your own, you'll understand the difference between antenna length and frequency. But it has to do with the uh, frequency that you're on. You need to have this, the, a length of antenna that matches that frequency. So we'll just say it like that extremely simply for now. So that is going to wrap up our baby, 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 baby antenna theory. Um, this is a very deep subject and there's other people that explain it much more in depth and perhaps better than I have, but hopefully you have now received the introduction to antenna theory. Please stick around for part four where we start talking about radios.